Namaste, many blessings, everyone. This is Verda Luce from Divine Timing Coaching, and I'm going to invite you to throw your hands up in the air and wave them like you just don't care, because you might not with all of the crazy transits coming in over the next two weeks. It's a new moon in Scorpio next Monday on November 13th with Uranus and Mars. Very volatile, very crazy, maybe a breakthrough. So we're going to break it down for you. We're going to look at all 12 signs in the second part of our journey here today. Before that, I'm going to play a song for you on guitar that is very Mars Uranus. And we are going to go through all of the, the major themes of this. There's a lot to talk about. I have pages of notes. Um, it's a new rebirth for Mars. Mars is a, a new version of the god at this time. Um, and so we're going to break down the version of masculinity and drive and passion and will over the next couple of years for all of us. So I'm also very excited to announce and to share in this uh, particular training here today about the Zodiac Shadow Play Journal. I'm announcing the new book. It's actually coming out for the new moon in Scorpio. When I was looking back at the transits, um, you know, a few months ago when I was preparing this book, I really felt like this was the most appropriate time to launch this uh, this journal, which is a, a journey into shadow work. And we have psychotherapy prompts from systems like IFS, internal family systems, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. We have some other prompts from uh, affirmations and gratitudes, uh, inspiring quotes from the Stoic philosophers. So there's a lot here. And I want to share a couple today that are really pertinent to what's going on with this new moon. So I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to invite you also to look below and join us for the live event with live guitar, ambient music, and a Scorpio embodiment journey uh, as we practice with some of the prompts next week for the journal release. I'm very excited about that. So what do we have? Let me show you the screen here uh, and we're, we'll dive in. This is a massive new moon and we're coming off of the eclipses, right? So the energy is still very hot from that. And this is this is hot. This is, you know, the song, she likes it hot. And um, this is spicy. This is major cayenne kind of moon going on here. Um, what's the hottest pepper? I don't know what the hottest pepper is, but it's like that because um, I'm thinking of that scene in The Simpsons where, you know, uh, Homer takes this <laughs> this jalapeno and he goes into the psychedelic trip. And it's it's very much like that with this new moon. Um, it's happening here. Let's back it up. Uh, November 13th. And there it is. Um, so it's about 3, 4 a.m. New York time. So it's going to be really early morning. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, but mostly the whole day of November 13th is really strong. And the the number one thing going on with this, this moon is that, <clears throat> first of all, it's a new moon in Scorpio, right? And anytime we have the new moon in Scorpio, always this time of the year, we're, we're really excavating deep into our souls. And a lot of times that comes through conf confrontation with something or a conflict or... Um, a uh, potential, um, you know, need to investigate or research something that, you know, surfaces that maybe has been pushed aside, hasn't been dealt with. It's been sort of in the caves of our unconscious. And, you know, something brings light to that. And, and so, you know, we were just coming out of the Halloween season. And this is always the time when we get sort of haunted from energies from our past. It could be past lives. It could be issues from our birth experience that come up or our family of origin, um, but it's a very psychological moon all the time. Now, that depth of the need to go in and investigate what's really causing this, right? Scorpio is the investigator. Scorpio is the researcher. I, I think of it as like the archeologist of the soul. It's literally an archeological sign, right? And you think about the ruins and the temples that are thousands of years old and have all the mystery behind them very scorpionic right the egyptian culture was very very scorpionic and so um you know even it's sort of uh, you know the scarab and some of the images from i mean there's there's scorpio gods and goddesses as well you know so we have this you know tradition of the scorpion you know that is 
is, is really intense, right? Because the scorpion can sting you, kill you possibly, but it also can sting itself. And this is what we have to be very, very careful of um, with this, this transit, this new moon, um, that a lot of destructive behavior can come up from within us and from those around us. And this can happen on the very personal level, familial level, relational level, to the obviously the global level and what's what's been happening, of course, with war and, and the news and, and politics and all of that. But we need to um, we need to hunker down. We need to expect that there's going to be a lot coming up and, and really work on reactivity. And, and the reason is because of the position of Mars and Uranus. Mars is within two degrees of this moon, which is happening at 20 degrees of Scorpio. So the most sensitive degrees to this moon are going to be, you know, between 15 and 25 of Scorpio, for sure, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius. So all the fixed signs, but definitely, you know, Scorpio, Taurus being hit really hard by this, uh, by this new moon. Now, the new moon is an initiatory energy. It's a beginning energy. So this can be a very exciting beginning. And it's something that whatever we're beginning right now, that in six months from now, we're going to have the full moon there. It's going to be around... Um, I think April, early April, and it's going to become, no, late April, April 24th, it's coming around four degrees of, uh, of, of Scorpio. So think about six months from now, what might be initiated now coming to its fruition, okay? And that's going to be happening in the house that we're going to talk about when we look at uh, your particular uh, sign, specifically rising sign, but we can also look at sun and moon, but the rising is going to be most accurate. Okay, so let's break down Mars and Uranus. I feel a little bit of that Mars Uranus frenetic energy. I need to slow it down here because it's like it is like that with Mars Uranus. We, we're, it's like we're on amphetamines, and we're going to be on amphetamines for a bit here. So it's like which one are we going to be on, right? Like you know, um, <laughs> won't go too deep down that rabbit hole, but it's very much like. Um, we're on speed, you know, there's, there's a volatile desire, Mars, Uranus, to change. Now, one of the archetypes here could be the alchemist in the laboratory, okay? Doing experiments, um, we're not sure what's going to happen, and there's a very strong surprise energy going on. But what we know is that it's like heating up in the lab. Something's going to happen, and that's happening all week before this new moon. Uh, and, and so again, you know, from the fifth on, basically, we're going to be feeling this. It's heating up, it's ramping up, it's intensifying, energy is accelerating. Even though it's, you know, the waning moon, the sun is getting closer to opposing Uranus. Mars is getting closer to opposing Uranus. He'll be exactly opposed pretty much on the moon, but we're building towards that. So it's like we're lighting the firecracker. So what is getting awoken inside of you right now? What's getting you excited? What's getting you um, into a space where you're feeling almost like a revolution is brewing inside of you? Now, this could be uh, this could be a new moon or like, you know, before this where people are like, that's it, I'm over. I'm not doing the job anymore. You know, I quit. Because Uranus can bring sudden um, endings, right? And And if we don't feel like we're free enough, or liberated enough, this is a very, uh, very radical need for, for freedom and change. And a lot of times, if we're not like living something that feels more authentic or true to ourselves, this kind of transit with, you know, the sun will be with Uranus for the whole week after this, Mars for, again, eight, nine days, we're going to have surges for freedom. We might see protests in the world. This could bring violence. This could bring uh, a lot of, um, you know, an energy of battle. You know, um, I mean, Mars is the god of war, and the god of war is with the sun, right? Now we call that combust, combust. And so the energies of the combust planet, when it's so close to the sun, are very erratic in nature. Like they, they can be very explosive in in terms of what that archetype represents. In this case, Mars, right? So what would that be? Well, fights, high levels of competition, being like a sore loser. I, I imagine like things happening in um, like in U.S. football, let's say, right, where like 
there's a play called by the referee and people don't like it and they get really upset and somebody gets ejected from the game or you know there's there, or there's sudden changes to lineups like last minute um this could also be very athletically uh, profound or like a, a moment of great excellence or very unique uh, expression you know because Mars is the athlete and there's just all of this fuel around that um, or like a tennis player right who just like won't let go of like the, the the ball being like right on the line or not you know I just I see that kind of thing happening um, you know maybe that's not so bad as some of the other things that might go on in the world or in our personal lives with this um, we we need to we need to be proactive um, and and not reactive with this, right? So this again, remember it's a new moon. So what do we want to initiate? What do we want to bring forward? Um, what feels really authentic and true and uh, really something unique and like our genius, you know, I have this strategy session with clients called Unleash Your Genius. And I love to invite them into that session where we really get clear about your unique imprint, right? Which is what astrology and human design, these systems that I love, why they're so powerful is because they show you that. And, and so this is a time where there could be a great metaphysical awakening as well inside of you. Uranus rules the higher mind, the cosmic mind. But the thing is, Mars and the sun opposite Uranus, is, is, it's very fiery, very uh, physical, very volatile in, in, in terms of how it might manifest. So we would suggest doing a lot of physical exercise. I mean, go on a very long hike, do a lot of aerobic work lifting weights um yeah kickboxing or like you know some some healthy sparring um maybe you do some play fighting with your partner right be careful but uh create your boundaries uh but yeah this is um some of that combust mars right where it's just like at any moment it could just really this is really flying off the handle um sometimes the combust too it could be that we get frustrated because we may want something to birth or get out there to the world. We might want that freedom, but then some kind of reality check comes in. And there is a reality check going on because of, of Mercury squaring Saturn, which I can just briefly say to you, because uh, there's so much more to say with this Mars, Sun, Uranus, but Mar Mercury is, is just going into Sag. And uh, that's happening about the 9th, 10th, and, and then squaring Saturn right when he does that and and that could bring uh, especially the days before this moon some delay to our travels mercury rules travels it could mean that we feel a bit blocked around communication or constricted saturn to mercury um we get more serious in our tone um but it's ironic because mercury's in sag and and sag is is um not very sober in its tone it's very bold it's very potentially dogmatic or fundamentalist in its perspective. It could come with a belief system. When we combine it with what's going on with Scorpio and the, the moon, like that like this is the right way. And here's the ethical response. And it's, this is, this is it. Like this is the law. And, um, and so th there, there can be, because of that square with Saturn, like a, a really a, a butting of heads or coming to a place that feels really like we can't, we just can't communicate. We just can't meet each other. Or we realize where we are coming from these very different perspectives. And, uh, and so we have to honor that. Now, this sounds really challenging, but it can also help our minds focus. It can help us get clarity on certain projects that, that feel more Sagittarian inspired, um, you know, spiritual in nature. Um, and, um, Spirituality is very important, and our, our our meditative path, our contemplative path, can really help us through this transit over the next couple of weeks. Because Neptune is in a trine to this new moon, and as the Sun and Mars keep going in Scorpio over the next you know few weeks, let's kind of like move the days along here. Yeah, so seventeenth, eighteenth. You know, that whole week, you're going to have the sun and Mars in a trine to Neptune. So I'll come back to the new moon. And the trine is a flowing, supportive energy from this, you know, god of mysticism and dreams and magic and 
uh, spiritual growth. And so it becomes really important to, I think, integrate all of our spiritual teachings during this new moon. And I would really uh, inspire you to do more meditation, um, more yoga. I'm in a deep like yin yoga practice right now, um, which I'm I feel like is helping a lot with the Saturn energies that I'm going through. Um, so uh, you might you might enhance a, a certain kind of yoga practice. But again, we we want to stress some physical energy here because uh, because of how strong this this energy needs to move through us. And um, and it's again, it's not. We have a great support also coming from Venus. Um, fortunately, as this moon you know intensifies in the, the week before, Venus has moved into Libra, and and this is really nice, right? Because she was, you know, she had that long retrograde in Leo, and then she was in Virgo, which is a sign that she's very, you know, critical, sometimes overly anal about things very health oriented, which is good and of service, but in Libra, she's more pleasant. And, and this might just be like very helpful to allow us to maybe confront something that is really scorpionic, uncomfortable, shady, shadowy, dark in ourselves and, um, and, and, and work it out with someone, a friend, a lover, a, a, you know, a collaborator, Venus and Libra, and actually be quite socially harmonic with that. And, and so the, the silver lining in this moon really is that Venus and Mars are in their rulership. Venus is in Libra, Mars is in Scorpio. Now this is the God and the goddess. This is the sacred masculine and feminine. And this is why I feel like this could be actually a really, one of the best ways of using this moon could be uh, for sacred sexuality, Tantra, enhancing intimacy and practices together. I've, do a lot of work with couples with that, um, you know, guiding how we can be more attuned to each other and, and honor your unique version of Venus and Mars in your chart, right? These are, these are ways that your God and goddess want to be appreciated and respected and honored. And it's how you show up the biggest in terms of your masculine and feminine energy. So it might be a great time if you haven't explored that to go deeper into, hey, who is my, my God and God, and God and goddess within myself? What am I attracted to in partners? Uh, what partnerships can support that energy really, um, really ma being magnified and being mirrored back to me? And uh, I, there's a lot of support here for that. And and so uh, again, you know, Mars Uranus. One of the ways of expressing that that energy that's so strong is through sexuality, through passion. That way, um, especially in the sign of Scorpio, right? We know it as a sign of sexual alchemy. Right of transformative, uh, deep, deep soul blending sexuality. This is not casual. So this is also something very important that our relationships right now will not feel casual, right? They, I mean, we we might meet some people, Venus and Libra, and like have a little surface there, but because of the Scorpio presence, we're going to go to the depths right away, and uh, and and that's why I like you know this this shadow play, this journal that I'm releasing. These are really deep questions. They're very like, very much to assist you becoming more intimate with your own soul. But it's these kinds of questions we might be asking ourselves. And I'm going to give you one of them right now to just ponder for a minute. You could pause the video or do it much longer. Um, but it, this was a prompt called trigger point therapy. What most triggers me in another specific person or people in general? What most triggers me in another specific person or people in general? How is this a reflection of some unhealed or unintegrated aspect of myself? How is this a reflection of some unhealed or unintegrated aspect of myself? So triggers, I mean, this is a very triggering moon. And so um, one, of, one of the techniques, uh, I also mentioned this in the book that the great Stoic philosopher Seneca spoke about in his book on anger is that, you know, anger is very fast. And so the best remedy is delay, the delay of reactivity. So whatever is happening around this new moon or in the buildup, this is one of the most important times to really be practicing 
breath work. Um, there's a lot of breath work modalities, um, soma breath, transformational breath, shamanic breath, rebirthing, which I've studied as well as holotropic. Um, but the point is to just take a longer exhalation because it diffuses the amygdala, the fear response, and, and that, that angry reactive part of us, like the, the dog that, that you know, wants to bite because you step on its tail. Um, you, you need to allow yourself to breathe longer, slower, and, and let the energy move for a few moments before really being reactive. Um, that's gonna be a, a great technique during this, uh, this time. Okay, so freedom. Again, this could be a, a relationship where you need to break free out of. It could be a job. Um, it, it could be a home situation. Something feels like I, I need more independence or freedom. Um, I think one of the ways you could channel this uh, this mood is uh, watching some movies. You know, movies can be great cathartic experiences. Uh, movies like Braveheart. Um, or, you know, I mean, this is a very crusading type of moon. It could be um, The Kingdom of Heaven by Ridley Scott, uh, which is about the Crusades. Uh, the Last Samurai, maybe. Um, you know, uh, but something where there is that spirit of revolution or freedom, um, potentially, you know, warrior-like type of energy. I mean, this is very heroic. Sun, Mars, you know, opposite Uranus. And Uranus is very Promethean. That's his nature. So again, it's like there's something very innovative with this, right? This this innovative hero that is being called forth in you. What is that? And I think that there's going to be some some huge breakthroughs in the next couple of weeks with uh, with AI and with technology. Um, now there could be some big financial news, a huge you know huge loss, huge gain. It could be just extreme, volatile, right? It might be something with cryptocurrency or um, the assets, the real estate market, something, uh, real estate, because, you know, Taurus is involved, Scorpio, of course, is big wealth, like like Wall Street, things like that. Um, so definitely would not be surprised with some huge, uh, literally volcanic shifts around finances. Um, and, and looking at like, where are my resources right now? Like how diversified am I? Um, you know, um, and remember, Scorpio is fixed. And so, you know, again, this is why we might be more stubborn in our reactivity during the cycle, but it also may look, make us look at like, where can I have some like more fixed assets that um, that can bring wealth into my life, right? Is, I mean, is that possible these days, right? These are questions to be asking. Uh, so, Also, you could channel this through, you know, really intense music, all kinds of, you know, death and thrash and, you know, metal, uh, punk, hardcore, you know, any of that archetype that you have in you that is more extreme that way. Great. Like, get down to it. Like, shake it out. Uh, it could be ec just ecstatic dance in general or maybe more like, you know, side trance or something like with, with faster, you know, beats per minute. Um, so. Okay, now the other piece I wanna mention before we kind of move into a song and, and personal charts is that the God Mars is being reborn. And this is due to something called the synodic cycle of Mars, which is when it conjoins the sun every two years, uh, you know, it, it disappears for a few days. It's in the rays of the sun. This is this combust we've been talking about. Um, and, and it's literally getting infused with like new life. It's like a, it's like going on a new mission, right? The God is getting, uh, the God of war or the missionary or the, you know, the aggressive, passionate, willful God is uh, getting a mission from the king, right? The son. And that mission is going to be a two-year mission. Well, it was in Libra the last couple of years. We know how much we've been looking at, you know, balance and harmony or lack thereof in relationships, uh, collaborations, give and receive. But now the, the new mask of the sacred masculine is in Scorpio. And, and this is also why the whole journey into shadow work, which I like to say can be shadow play, is so important. Because 
this God can be so powerful, so shamanic, um, can attract great amounts of wealth um, and influence and impact. But at what costs? Is it going to compromise and sell something out? Um, is it going to um, play into, you know, games of power and, you know, intense uh, jealousy or possessiveness or control, right? As the Stoics say, you know, the only thing that, um, the main thing you have to do in your life is to let go of the externals, the things that you can't control. And that is where you will find the true freedom. That's where you will find the true freedom. So if we're looking at this sun, Mars, opposite Uranus, the rebirth of the, the god of war, but the god of desire, the god of desire is desiring real freedom over the next couple of years. And that's where real power will come from. But it comes from the surrender of that need to control. So, see if there's anything else I want to say before looking at. Yeah. So there's, um, we're just, we're moving towards a full moon on the 27th in, Sag in Gemini. And so, you know, what, whatever's building during this time, it's, it is really significant because we don't get out of the month uh, without Mars. Let me move this forward a bit. Just watch Mars right here, okay? Sun, Sun and Mars are together. Oh, look, they're, they're on the 20th, right? So you, because of just the speed of the, you know, Mars and the Sun, and then Mars just moves into Sagittarius by the full moon in Gemini. And, but it's still so close to the sun. And so really we are embarking on over two weeks, two and a half weeks of the Mars-Sun combination. So there's, this is something heroic. There's a lot of new beginnings. And we got to break this down into your chart and see where this is landing. Before we do that, I'm going to share a song with you. It'll be brief. It's a riff. It came through in Greece a few weeks ago. Really excited about it. Um, so I'm going to share it with you and invite you to just let your body move and shake, be cathartic, be um, let it just move in ways it hasn't moved before, um, and and like liberate yourself through the movement. And uh, this is what we're going to do a lot more of in uh, when we launch the book on the 13th for the new moon, because this energy is going to be so hot then. But I want to invite you to do that now, and I need to make an adjustment on the Zoom audio, and then we'll jump into that. So get ready for that, however you need to do that. And I'll stop the share, change the audio. All right, let's do it.
هو هو give thanks thanks to the creator coming through all of us channeling through all of us at this time birthing the spirit of the new moon in Scorpio so let's go into sharing the screen with you again I hope that was a good journey for everyone and uh and we're going to look at this new moon with a couple bullet points for each sign so let's share the screen and need some water after that <laughs> all right so here you have Once again, oh, this is the 20, no, this is, yes. So let's get this back to our moon. And we're gonna start with Scorpio rising because with Scorpio rising, this moon will be in your first house. And, uh, and so, there it is. Coming. Oh, let's get it back on. 13th and we got to do the hours here all right so <clears throat> Scorpio rising the first house this is such a massive energy for you because it's landing in the 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 area that is the most personally identified with the first house is where you know our ascendant is and my sense here is that you you know you could be very reactive <laughs> Um, but this could be one of the greatest times of, you know, the next couple of years, the last couple of years for you to be a leader, to be standing out in front of people and to, to take initiative, to be in charge, um, you know, not, not to be afraid of that, to be bold, maybe take a healthy risk. Um, you're going to be very influential and impactful with whatever you're doing right now. And you could be very defensive. This is very important to be uh, in the physical body, like we were talking about, and be exercising more. Um, and it feels like there's, um, you know, there could be some changes around relationship for you during this. And you, that's why you want to be careful around how reactive you, you might be, right? And, um, you know, there's that kind of just healthy relational practice of like, having a talking stick, right? Letting one person complete before the other, um, before the other starts to share so that each of us feel very heard. And that's really essential here with this, um, this placement of, you know, sun, Mars, uh, the new moon in the first house and a long Mars transit here. And, and these are some themes that have been here all of November, some of October already. So um, be, be, sensitive to the fact that you might not be very sensitive during this time you might be very brash and bold and you know me first and so be be aware of the potential consequences of that um but but take some some you know dare to be yourself with this transit and um you know it whatever you're doing if in terms of business like this could be a really good time to look at branding and your visibility we could talk more about that and do a lot of business coaching using astrology and design. If that's something of interest. Just send me a message. This is, this is really big because it, you know, sun in the first house with Mars there, like, how do I want to shine and radiate and be brilliant? Cause it will be seen. Whatever you're doing is going to be seen at this time. So if we move forward and we look at sad rising, then all this energy is happening in the 12th house. And, and so one of the things that we want to be careful of with, with the long Mars cycle and this energy and, you know, the 12th house is sometimes our sleep could be really disrupted during this, especially with this Uranus energy, which could affect our daily rhythms, Uranus being in the sixth house. Um, and so this can make us a little bit crazy. Um, if this is happening, I would definitely recommend, again, doing more pranayama practices before uh, bed, like uh, especially with the longer out breaths. Um, and maybe if, if you can't sleep, use it as a spiritual practice. Um, you know, so in Islam, they get up at 
in the very early morning Fajr prayer. And, and that's the time when the, the Quran, Allah says, this is the time I am closest with you and my servants are closest to me. So this could be a time to um, really pray more. They call it the hour of the gods, right? Between say four and five or three and five. Um, the Tibetan Buddhists have a practice, you know, um, where they will literally intentionally wake up in the middle of the night so that they can do certain mantras on certain um, seed syllables on certain chakras, right? This is Tibetan part of Tibetan dream yoga. So this could be, you know, almost a necessity if you are staying up more because of this. And um, don't take unnecessary like caffeine. Um, you, you probably need less because it, it will probably keep you up. Um, and uh, just attune yourself to being of greater service during uh, the next few weeks and be... Um, this is a can be a little boundary dissolving, a little frustrating to outward egoic desires. Um, these will change, and you know, just by the end of the month. But um, just be sensitive to that, and um, maybe give some time for retreat for more inner work. Um, there's a lot of energy moving, more meditative, more within. So let's look at um, Capricorn rising. This is potentially, you know, this could be very auspicious around. Uh, alliances and network and affiliations. So if you're part, part of uh, any joint venture communities, right? Like business communities, how can you partner with others? Who's who's on your team, right? Get very motivated around some of those topics, but also realize that some, because of Mars, um, we could get very defensive around the people that we're, uh, you know, affiliated with. Um, so the, there's the irony of this Mars, right? Like, because Mars motivates us or drives us in the direction of whatever house he's in, but he also has a naturally defensive, irritable, competitive, combative energy. So you can be drawn to people, but then you might feel certain competitive energies with them. And, and maybe you can com help each other, right? Like compete to be the best versions of yourself. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's a there's a, a need to network with this, and and find uh, the tribe, the community, um, and you might feel like you want to be really standing out as a leader in that community around this time. And this is you know this is also a huge theme for um, Aquarius risings because Scorpio is your tenth house of career. That means this is huge bo boost and burst of this fiery energy, right? Uh, all month of November but big time around this new moon in terms of your profession, your career, your vocation. I mean, this could feel really like you are on a mission big time. And so I would ask you, you know, what is your mission statement? Do you have one? Even if you're working for someone else, you know, um, fighting the good fight, you know, what, what is the good fight that you stand for? Um, if you're a revolutionary, what what what's your revolution right what's the movement that you want to represent this is a very aquarius thing anyways right aquarius rising thing but if you look at um you know all these planets up in your area of career you're going to stand for this and um and i would imagine that there could be some you know some competitive or um aggressive energy with with uh, a boss potentially um, now this could make you very bossy. And so if you do have employees, you know, try to, try to be strategic with how you communicate and, you know, communicating your goals, what you want, Mars, and, and, and don't get too easily frustrated that they might not understand you. Right. Um, and, and so you need to be more systematic with how you're communicating with Mercury and Saturn can, can help support, uh, as we talked about so uh, be more systematic with communication, and then uh, there could be a lot of success with the career. With the ninth house, this is this is for Pisces, and Pisces, um, Pisces rising. Um, this this actually could be a really auspicious new moon because there's a trine. You know, same with the water element. This is a spiritual house, a house of growth, expansion of of purpose and meaning in one's life. Uh, you could be blogging or vlogging or very public. Maybe you're publishing something at this new moon. Um, 
there is um, maybe some desire to travel, um, planting that seed that maybe six months from now you'll be somewhere abroad. Um, that could be really um, something to to explore with this new moon. Uh, what would it take? What are the steps to get there? Maybe even considering a, a more long-term relocation. If so, definitely relocation astrology would be a recommendation. That's that's my niche in astrology. So I'd love to support you with that if that's coming up for you, Pisces. Uh, but this is this should be pretty flowing uh, for you. And um, you know, activating in a way that a lot of times, you know, Pisces rising is a little bit more passive. So um, but this might be more like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that dream. Right, I'm not just going to dream it. I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to live in the fantasy. I'm going to actually put the energy in. I'm going to activate. I'm going to take the steps necessary to get there. So, listen to what those steps are and and really um, align with that and take take that step. Um, there is a, this is really deep for Aries risings. Aries Aries risings because the Moon uh, Mars Sun series is also in Scorpio. Um, series god of, goddess of nurturance and belonging she's also in scorpio so she's saying you know we're going to belong more by going into the soul and finding where we belong in in our um in our ancestry in our um, past lives in other places and times that i feel connected with and this eighth house can show you you know where where different aspects of the soul are hanging out i mean this is a space where we can tap into um living parallel lives right um there's uh you know fragments of the soul uh, we we deal with this in in uh, psychotherapy we talk about it in parts work and ifs as i share in the shadow play journal um you know parts what parts of me maybe i could pull that up here real quick um let's see if i can you know this this might make us aware of certain parts of us that feel um abandoned or jealous. Um, and uh, or possessive. And here's I'll I'll give you this this uh, this prompt. It's about trust and vulnerability. Which parts of me are fearful fearful of fully trusting others? Can I trace these fears back to any early attachment experiences or disruptions? Kind of a combination of attachment theory and IFS. And can I trace these fears back to early attachments or disruptions of those attachments? Right. And then I can't really trust another now because dad left, mom left, something got ruptured. This is important. This is not, this is something to really be gentle with and explore and really best with a therapist or evolutionary astrologer, or, you know, where we can sit and, and really go through this process. But this is a this is a very deep moon for you. And it could also be a time where you're looking at, well, I need to really like expand my resources and partner with some people who might have a, a bigger influence than me. And that means I have to learn how to, this is not easy for Aries, but I might have to learn how to really listen to the other, to show up for the other, right? Um, if we're in a marriage and there's a lot on the line with, with wealth and resources and you know you might have some some arguments during this moon and you got to be careful with that you don't want to burn bridges it's a big theme of this whole moon right burning bridges versus maybe birthing something innovative and experimental that's new that that could be really fruitful in six months from now and especially burning bridges in relationships for taurus rising because this energy is going to be happening with sun mars you know in the seventh house so it also may be hey if i'm not in a relationship i am fired up to to go out and create one going on dates um, you might be more sexually charged be, be careful to not be too aggressive um or just create fights with a partner that you're in relationship with or any collaborations you you will be a more you'll be more motivated towards them but also a little bit more you know potentially i feel i need to prove something um and uh, pushy right so so just be be sensitive to that um and create space for the other as well also when we're looking at gemini risings this moon is is uh you know highlighting the the area of health and illness and just a lot of work right the sixth house down here 
is um, we got to pay attention to a lot of details. There's long tasks. This is unfortunately, you know, it doesn't feel great uh, in terms of spaciousness in our life. It feels like it, it kind of like we're in a jail cell. We don't have much room to move because of how many things we got to get done. Right. And so time mapping, which is work I love doing with clients, when to do what, when not to do what, when to take break, mapping out the literally the days every day, the weeks, the month, getting really into planning. You might start planning the next year even coming up. Um, and uh, just making sure that you're dotting your I's, crossing your T's, and taking care of all those little tasks. Being sensitive that Mars here could feel like I'm burning, I'm burning out. And naturally, that can lead to sickness, illness. Um, you might be taking a lot of caffeine or other stimulants, and you have to watch what that does to you on the other side, for instance, of sleep or of, um, you know, pushing beyond, like, you know, in human design, like, for instance, being a projector and Gemini rising, you could be really thinking you have more energy than you do, right? Um, and uh, you get out of the environment of people that have that generator life force and you are just dead tired right and so just give yourself enough rest amidst a lot of things that you have to be attending to and um and 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 really go with that like you know what krishna teaches arjuna and the bhagavad gita like offer everything you do up to me and this is true for all of us but um but everything is an act of service right and um again the cycle will pass there'll be a lot of energy in area of partnership in a few weeks but we're not there yet. So when it comes to um, cancer risings, this is also potentially, you know, a, a more flowing type of moon. Just because you, you know, you have, you have uh, the trine again, like Pisces with, um, you know, maybe motivating you um, around, more play, more relaxation, um, maybe more time with family and kids for sure. If you have the, um, could there be an argument with your kids? Yeah, Mars is here. Um, but maybe you get motivated to go, um, you know, autumn hiking with them or, you know, doing some activities or working on some school projects together, uh, something like that. Um, but it's all your, your inner child, your creative child playing, creating. So what, what wants to be created through you and feels nurturing to you, Cancers? That's, that's one of the questions to ask um, for this new moon. And then, this is a really, um, really deep uh, time as well for Leo Risings because you got the energy moving of the new moon moving through your fourth house. And something that I talk about in the book is that the ancestral shadow can live in the fourth house. And, you know, the shadow is not in one part of our charts. The shadow is all over the charts, right? Really everything has its shadow. But there are definitely areas of our chart that have more shadowy components than others, like the eighth house we talked about, or the fourth house, um, or the south node, for instance. But the fourth house is more that ancestral shadow. So this is where, you know, whoever you're living with, and then your family of origin, you might feel like I can't take it anymore. I have to react. I'm, I'm, I need, I'm creating a fight here, you know, and be careful with that. I see again and again when Mars is in the fourth house every two years. This is one of the most um, consistent times when we move because Mars is restless. And so if you don't move, you might take some short trips to take advantage of this, maybe to go see your parents or family. Um, or you might be working on the house, right? Mars energy going towards the house. That's, those would be some of the best ways. And then doing ancestral healing work, family constellation, looking at the charts of parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters. These can be great ways of working with these um, IFS, um, some of those pieces, because um, it's, it's a therapeutic type of uh, energy for sure. And a couple more signs here, Virgo. Um, you know, this this can be, I think, kind of a, a productive new moon time for you, the third house. You're learning a lot. Maybe you're offering information. You're communicating a lot. 
um, you're you're fired up. I, I don't think this is so so challenging as much. Like it's um, it, it's uh, you know the third house. We we learn and we we share ideas. Um, it, you know, if, if there's some issue with a brother or sister that might come up, but um, I think you're 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 busy. You're productive. You're enjoying it. There's some mental energy that's very stimulating for you. Maybe very innovative. Could be really good times to be marketing ideas to the world. Um, so Virgo rising, and then um, new moon for Libra risings in the second house. Now, this is an important time for Libra risings to be thinking about. Hey, where do I want to be six months from now with my finances? With my yeah, what I'm earning, and and how is this moon triggering like my sense of self worth? Do I feel good enough about myself? If not, what's what's uh, what's preventing that? Um, and what what do I need to do? I mean, maybe if I've, you know, you you've been dealing um, Libra risings. So, you know, Jupiter's in your eighth house, so you might be might be really receiving a gift or a bounty or some blessing from a partner, right? You might maybe your partner has a lot of money or is taking care of you in some ways, or maybe their parents have money, or maybe you just got a loan. That could be great. Um, but you want to stay motivated about how you're earning your own resources, coming into really validating yourself and feeling really true to yourself and um, getting clear on where you want to be with your own resource management and attainment uh, over the next uh, you know, six months and, and when we hit that full moon there. And Again, uh, you know, something I like to teach my my business clients is your Scorpio in the second house. We're earning money from a lot of times doing really deep soul work. So it could be shamanic work. It could be um, leading breath works for people or any kind of therapeutic type of work, um, medicine ceremony, these types of things, you know, where we're going very deep into the soul, shamanic journey. So, um, you know, if, if you've been thinking about doing more of that work or, um, you know, looking at maybe how, how should I channel that into earning, earning resources, this is a time to really, to really go deeper with that. Could be, could be hypnotherapy even, you know, Scorpio can rule that. Um, so uh, we can always talk more about, you know, how to earn resources in your chart. The, the charts speak very, very deeply to this. So we're back to Scorpio rising and what a day and a couple of days that's going to be around that that new moon in Scorpio. Um, wow, it's been quite the journey today. I feel like I've already been on the roller coaster with you. I want to invite you to to check out the link below for the Scorpio. I'll get less studious now. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting older. So the Scorpio uh, Zodiac play, shadow play book launch. I'm so excited to share this with you. We're going to go really deep into everything we talked about today. And this will really help you navigate the next couple of weeks, but in general to do shadow work and, and to try to make it more playful, but really allow the soul to touch itself and give the time and space for some co contemplation amidst all of this change and cray cray craziness energy going on with this, this moon as we approach it. So try to be uh, harnessing inner quiet during this next week. Um, but also motivation, unleashing your genius. And uh, if I can support you in any way, readings, ongoing life and business coaching, definitely get in touch, human design, astrology, locational astrology. And I hope to see you next week. I hope you'll check out the book when it launches on Amazon next week. And, uh, and we'll see you in the next moon cycle. All right. Namaste. All the best.